Hey, it's Justin Goff. So I'm here with Jonathan Boyd, one of the members of our Copy Accelerator program. Uh, and I want to bring him on today to talk about his new offer. So he has an offer in the, uh, in the guitar niche uh, that basically teaches people how to learn how to play guitar. And in the last couple of months, uh, he's scaled that from kind of just an idea to now he's doing anywhere from 60 to 70 uh, cold traffic sales a day, which, which is really impressive. Uh, so I want to bring him on to kind of walk through exactly how that offer came to be, uh, all the steps that went into it uh, from idea all the way to scaling it to, to making sales. Um, so kind of before we jump in, I, I do want to chat and kind of ask about, okay, so before the guitar offer, I know you were writing copy. I know you were doing some copy chiefing. Is that kind of how you cut your chops in terms of getting better at copy? Uh, I mean, definitely. Like, when I was chiefing, you know, we were in the trenches of copy, like um, million dollar a month spend. So we were churning out copy uh, all the time. I set up a kind of similar to Agora, but on a much, a much smaller scale. I set up a copy system to where we had uh, a bunch of copywriters who were actually in the Copy Accelerator group, which is really fun. Uh, but we, we had a, a system to just churn out offers. So we were doing three or four new offers a week. They were in the biz op space. But uh, during that time, I wrote like 30 BSLs. Uh, within a few months so and then we we moved on to real estate eventually but yes to answer your question absolutely definitely cut my chops there okay so from there you kind of decided all right i, I want to create my own my own offer um the guitar niche would it is really surprising to me because i really don't know much about it um but there's a lot of it that i really like just from the little bit i know like simply the fact that it's it's something you could run on Facebook and Google and YouTube very cleanly without probably ever running into any issues. To me, I'm like, Oh, that's, that's super appealing. Um, and I mean, I, I guess I, I it, it's a world I'm not familiar with. So I never, it never even like is one of those niches that even dawned on me. So I'm, I'm kind of curious, I'm assuming you play guitar. That's how you kind of came up with the idea, right? Yeah. So maybe on the surface it kind of seems like um you know i was i was doing some chiefing writing a, bu writing a bunch of offers writing a bunch of copy and then maybe i kind of stumbled on this market and came up with this offer but you know, there's always a backstory right so um i actually dropped out of grad school twice uh i played i've been playing guitar for a, over a couple of decades and the reason i dropped out of grad school was because i wanted to start a guitar school so it was like my first foray into entrepreneurship. I knew I wanted to be an entrepreneur and do my own stuff. Um, so I, I started a physical school, had a commercial location. That's how I got started with ads, uh, landing pages, writing copy, Google ad, AdWords, you know. And that's just kind of how I got started. And then over time, um, when I decided I wanted to go more into the copy world, that's when I started doing, you know, started writing more copy, writing offers um, for clients or um, and doing some chiefing at the company that we were at. And then in the background, uh, I knew I wanted to be location independent. So I didn't want to have, if I take you back to the physical school, it got to the point where people were asking me if I was going to like franchise or duplicate locations. And I just absolutely had no interest in that whatsoever. So, you know, I wanted to be able to just have a laptop, you know how it goes, just to uh, be able to work from wherever. So that's when I started building the online version of the school. And, uh, it's not really a school, but um, that's where the genesis of that started. And then over time, just from narrowing my, my market is very, very specific. It's adult male career professionals who have played guitar for a long time or a while and they got stuck. And that's the reason why the company is called Breakthrough Guitar because they need a breakthrough. Uh, but anyway, that the, the offer, how the offer came about is that um, I kind of, took stock of who I was talking to, you know, what the market, um, what was missing out there in the market, especially online. Cause I was saying I'm selling online, but what I did basically was the funnel that I set up and I'm sure we'll talk more about this, but the funnel that I set up essentially took, takes guitar players through the exact same selling process that I took people through in person in the school. So it literally walks them through like actually picking up the guitar and doing stuff to try to you know get them uh to have a light bulb moment and then they go to see a vsl and then they see a like a low ticket course and then you know we can talk more about that but that's where that started so let, let's go back to kind of creating the offers so in the big picture it's like okay i want to create this course that teaches people how to play guitar but you're much more specific on the niche than that 
Um, I, I forget the exact hook of your kind of product, but what's the actual like primary promise that you're, that you're giving them? So basically it's being able to uh, play lead guitar without thinking. So play lead guitar by listening, by feeling the notes instead of you know, thinking about like theory or this scale or what are the names of the notes. That's where everybody, that's what the problem most people have. They think about it. That's the problem. Okay. And, and you kind of came to that being a good idea for a hook or for the angle of the product simply from working with lots of students, right? That was part of it. Um, we both know that online world and offline world have a lot of differences. They obviously have similarities because we're talking to humans, but um, the, the, how do I say, it's on a meta level, the, the, the idea, yes, came from working offline with people over the years. But when it comes to online, like a specific, let's say headline or something like that, that's going to resonate, obviously that, that came through kind of iterating and testing. Right. So, right. yeah. Um, okay. So w one question I have, let's say when it comes to guitar, that there's so much stuff you could have gone and it could have been like how to learn like your first song. It could have been learn your first like three chords. It could have been, I don't know, learn how to play a solo. Like th there's a ton of stuff that you could learn how to do. Um, what made you really kind of dive into like, okay, I think this is the hook. Did you test that hook? Is it from the research? Where did that kind of come from? So again, that's kind of a loaded answer. So I'll, I'll try to, to uh, condense it down. Um, from, from having taught for a number of years and from, having been in the market myself in the past um basically there was a there was a period of about a decade or a little more where i was really struggling to, to put the pieces together and this is what guitar players will say that they when somebody's a beginner obviously they don't know anything they'll start to learn a few chords or they'll start to learn a few simple pieces of songs or something like that and then they complain about their fingers hurting or, or whatever but eventually the people that continue uh what happens is they start learning more and more and they get tired of playing the same old stuff. They start to kind of venture into theory and things like that, but it's just so overwhelming. They don't really, they can't make sense of it all. There's so many puzzle pieces, they have no idea how it connects all together. And they, that's when they get stuck and they, they can't figure it out. They're confused, they're overwhelmed, they're frustrated. So the reason I bring that up is because those people who are at that point is who I eventually narrowed my target market down to uh, in person. And through that process, I was... I, I developed certain systems and methodologies that I knew um, that would meet those guys at that point. And then, you know, whatever system I would take them through, whatever it was designed to get them over the hump or, get the, you know, to turn the light bulb on in their head or uh, open up a whole new world to them or whatever. So the actual idea for the product in that specific niche, this specific product in this specific niche, um, that's kind of where it started. And going back to the reason I brought up uh, myself and, struggling for like a decade or so is because when I was learning when I was going out there looking on YouTube buying books buying courses buying all the stuff it's almost like if you could picture a brick wall 99% um, of guitar instruction whether that's teachers online courses books whatever they give you bricks they give you a piece of music or something that you can learn and regurgitate or they give you concepts that that aren't really connected to other concepts they just give you a brick and after you learn all these bricks, uh, if you're trying to build a brick wall, like if you just stack a bunch of bricks together, you just have a stack of bricks. You don't have a brick wall. So what's missing is the, the mortar in between the bricks just to connect all the bricks together. And uh, that's the one thing that I was always missing. And over time, I developed systems and methodologies to teach the big picture, to teach how it all connects together. And that's the stuff that when I had a school, um, guitar players were coming into the school with the same problems that I used to have. And I was like, what the hell? Like this was like 10 years ago when I was struggling with this, surely somebody's like fixed this by now online and no, they haven't. So, uh, that's, that's kind of how all this got started in the first place. And then to, to answer your question in you know, one or two sentences, the, the idea for the product, uh, and how the product came about and how the angle came about was because of all that. This is my answer to that problem. Right. Which is really, really smart. Cause I mean, we see this all the time. So many people 
trying to come up with hooks and trying to come up with angles and come up with a product without truly, truly understanding the market. Uh, and the fact that you narrowed your, like yours is, your product does not appeal to all guitar players. It appeals to a very specific kind of guitar player. And I'm, I'm assuming it probably actually repels a lot of guitar players that you actually wouldn't want, um, like a newbie. Um, I'm assuming the copy is probably too far over their head where they're like, oh, this is not what I need or not what I want. Uh, I think that's a really good point to make because so many people make the mistake of like, I want to cast the widest net possible because I don't want to miss out on any of the sales. And what, one of the massive problems with that is when you try to create something that appeals to everybody, it, it ends up appealing to nobody. Uh, and the reality right. is if you really focus on that, like centered market of like, okay, here's the like exact person I want. Um, mm -hmm. that's when the offers really speak to them. That's when they really sell. Yeah. So just to add on to that, um, specifically thinking back to when I was learning copy or learning how to write offers, learning how to create offers, coming up with hooks, all that kind of stuff. I think there, there are these things that we hear over and over again. Like if you try to appeal to everybody, you appeal to nobody, but just like anything else, you know, there's the, the Zen saying to know and not to do is not to know. If you don't experience it, you don't actually understand what that means. So the reason I bring this up is because through this process of developing this offer, making it live, tweaking it, talking to customers, all that kind of stuff, you really start to realize that, oh, what I'm saying on the page is number one, uh, just for an example, let's assume that I have three different pockets of people in the guitar market that I could speak to. And I'm, I'm just doing this as an example, but let's just say we have total beginners, we have women, and no, no nothing about against women, I just prefer to work with men. <laughs> but, but uh, let's say we have total beginners, uh, we have women, and then we have guys who played for a long time and got, got stuff, right? We have those three different people. So what you're talking about attracting and repelling people in your copy, um, number one, you don't have to think of what to say. Like you just need to communicate to the person you're trying to talk to and tell them what they need to know or what they want to know or what you want them to know. So if I'm going to talk to, uh, you know, these guys in the third group, well, even just the very beginning of my copy, like, like if I, or an email or something, I'm not going to say, uh, Hey guys and, ga and gals, like something like Todd Brown might say, I'm just going to say, Hey guys, like it informs what you write. And then with the whole beginner thing, you know, there's, there would be no language whatsoever in any of my copy that would say learning your first chords or struggling with your fingers hurting or something like that. Cause it just doesn't relate to the people that I'm talking to. Right. And, Additionally, um, you know, that's kind of the starting point, but I think a lot of copywriters, and I'm, I'm only saying this from experience, but try to think of what can I say or what can I write that's going to get somebody interested or something. And it's not, that, that's almost completely irrelevant. Um, when you start, let's say you start making sales and you start actually talking to customers, you start actually understanding what they're thinking what their actual objections are. They're saying like, hey, do you take PayPal? That's something you never would have thought of just sitting down to write a copy about some kind of guitar playing secret. You know, whether it's like in an FAQ, I could have just said, yeah, we take PayPal. It, it just, I don't know, going back to knowing your market. Um, actually, and again, this is one of those things that you hear all the time, know your market, know your market, know your market. But when you actually experience that, you realize that it's like, oh, when they say know my market, it's like, Justin's my neighbor and I actually know Justin. I, he, he would probably wear this, you know, uh, Henley shirt or he would probably like this certain kind of chocolate cake. So let me make that for him and take it to him. Like that's what it means to know your customer. Yep. I mean, that's a super good point because most people say they know their customer. And then if you really dug down and like, okay, create a profile of who this person is, what their day is like, what they think about, what they're scared of, what they're ashamed of. Most people would be, they, they wouldn't have a fucking clue. Um, that, that's true. Like you said, truly knowing your customer. Um, all right, let's switch gears and kind of, so you got the offer, you got it created, uh, your first time putting it out there and actually just seeing if it works. Was that with Facebook ads? Um, I think so. So full disclosure, I've tried numerous versions of, of an offer centered around this concept and eventually landed on one that actually you know, really worked. So the first one was actually a webinar. Um, and believe it or not, David Garfinkel brought, bought from that web webinar, which is really funny. 
Um, uh, but anyway, you know, I tried that. I, I tried a, another, another type of offer. I, I tried a few different things along the way. It just sucked. They just totally bombed. And eventually I kind of iterated and narrowed it down to this specific offer uh, with this specific type of funnel and this specific appeal and messaging and whatnot. So yes, it started on Facebook. Okay. So, so we started on Facebook price point is what is it? 37 for your 20, 27 for the front end, 27 for the front end. And then the first upsell is 37 a month, 37 a month for a kind of membership site where you teach them more, uh, more guitar stuff. Okay. So you're not, you're not at a very high price point on either of those. Um, but you're also in more of a hobby niche. So, um, I, I think you can probably get away with that a lot more in a niche like that compared to, I don't know, something else where it's like, you'd have to be a little higher or you'd have to have a, like a much higher AOV. Um, okay. So, so we're there, we're starting with Facebook ads right out of the gate. Did you see anything that kind of showed you, okay, this might have legs. Did it bomb? Did it work right out of the gate? How, how'd that go? Yeah. So this specific iteration that I have now, um, it actually started, the, the specific funnel that I have is it actually started as a, the lead magnet was actually a free email course. And that's how I, I started it before putting the, the actual VSL to sell the product. Um, and the, the angle that I was leading with was called the ultimate lead guitar light bulb moment. And I started getting, just to put this in perspective, you have, uh, which, which, which side is right or left on your, screen is this the left side that is the left side on my screen yeah all right so facebook ad to let's say like an andre chaperone style sphere of influence series of pages so we've had facebook ad basically big idea on page one they click over to page two and it's actually a how-to article uh, to get the gets them to pick up their guitar and do something and then they go to page three where they can finally opt in so i was running that funnel model and then the opt-in of page three was for a free email course um, just so I could test the idea and test the hooks. And even from people going through all of those stages and actually doing something like, or presumably doing something, I was getting less than 50 cent opt-ins, like 50 cent leads from that. So that was like, okay, we definitely hit on something here. So then I added, uh, I, I switched it from an email course to just a, a straight up lead magnet with all the content in it. And then a VSL after that. So we have Facebook, uh, page one, page two, page three content, and then a VSL. Wow. So, and then once that, once I started, um, once I started running that, I got as low as $3 and 22 cent CPA for, for purchases on that funnel. Are you still running it that way? Or are you running it straight to a, a sales still page? Running, still running that way on Facebook. That way works better on okay. GDN or, or Google, it works better. Just lead magnet straight to VSL. Okay. So let's break that down a little bit. So somewhat for the people that does a lot to, to kind of take in. So someone sees your Facebook ad, um, they click on the ad. The first page they land on is the lead magnet, correct? No. So the first page they land on in general is present the big idea, open a bunch of loops. Okay. So big idea, promise, open loops. Then they click over to the okay. next page. So this is kind of like the old the school page. new body kind of setup where it's like multiple pages. Yep. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. So the next page is just another content page that. Yeah. So the next page is essentially like a how to, um, I frame it as a test, but essentially they pick up their guitar and they do something. So it's like a, a little mini lesson. Um, and the, the, you know, the psychology behind that is I'm not asking you for anything. I'm going to give you some first. And then when they actually pick up the guitar and do the thing, uh, the process that they go through is exactly the same thing that I took them through in person, which got people, uh, you know, it turned on the light bulb for them and it got them really hot to get started. So where I did, I never, ever, ever, not even one single time had to ask anybody if they were interested in guitar lessons or interested in moving forward. They, they just, they, they didn't care. After we went through this, they wanted whatever it is that we were going to do. Uh, I mean, that, that's the power of a really good demonstration right there. Right. Okay. So they go from ad to uh, lander to the next lander and then the page yeah. after that. 
The page after that is where the lead magnet is offered. Okay. And the lead magnet, what, what's the lead magnet called again? It's a, yeah, it's called the ultimate lead guitar light bulb moment. Nice. Good name. Um, okay. So, so they opt into that and then I'm assuming once they opt in then they're going straight to the BSL. Correct. Okay. And I'd be curious. So I, I know you were getting a pretty good return on ad spend on this when, that's, it's interesting because your, your formula here and your process is very different from almost every other info product that's successful that I've seen. Uh, there's, there's simply just a lot of steps going on, but uh, you can't argue with what works. I mean, when something's working, it's working. Um, so people are buying. How many of your sales are actually coming then versus in kind of like the follow-up email sequences? Do you know? You mean percentage of front end buyers versus like follow up buyers? Yeah, like if you spent, I mean, if you sent, I don't know, 100,000 clicks to it, like mm -hmm. how many of them are coming on that right there when they click through versus? I'd probably say it's 80 20. Okay. About 20% through follow up, maybe. Okay. Cool. Um, so then if they buy the course, which is right now 27 bucks, and I'm assuming you tested that into that price, correct? Nope. I'm nope. going to. Nice. So it's another leverage point. Yeah. Okay. So we're at 27 and then your upsell is obviously one that I'm more familiar with because I've seen this a lot in the copy accelerator group. Uh, and it's a brilliant, freaking brilliant upsell. Um, you're selling them into your membership site, which is traditionally very hard to do. Um, people don't want to sign up for subscriptions, don't want to like sign up for long-term billing, but the way you do it, is positioning it as you're getting all this stuff for free in exchange for joining my membership site, correct? Yeah, more or less. Yeah. Um, I can't remember exactly what is the actual like product you're offering there? So if we back up and talk about the front end product, the front end product is like, let's assume that we're going to sell somebody a college degree. So we're going through the funnel and we're selling somebody on uh, college 101. Like that's the very first class. So the actual front end product in my, my, in my funnel is a 101 class. Like a kind of, not a beginner, but for the market that I'm targeting, a beginner level or version of that. So when they go to the upsell, they have the option to get the 201, 301, 401 bundle or package or whatever uh, for free when they try the membership. So when they try, like, let's say all of the other degrees within the college, like the art degree, the engineering degree, the, the whatever. How many, uh, how many people do you have in your membership site now? It's, it's about, it's almost 500. Wow. Dude, that's awesome. Congrats. Um, so I mean, well, one thing I want to point out to the people, what Jonathan's doing really is th this whole thing is set up to build his membership site. Uh, that's really kind of the big play here because that's an infinitely scalable asset for you. I'm assuming, correct? Yeah. I mean, nothing breaks. Yeah. I mean, assuming, yeah. I mean, but it's not like more of your time if there's 700 exactly. people in there versus 500. Exactly. Uh, so that's an infinitely scalable asset for him that is recurring monthly revenue, um, which is, which is not easy to do. I mean, everybody loves to, dream about getting monthly revenue but it, it's kind of tough to sell but uh he's found a really good way to do it and the upsell the way he's doing it uh is, is a huge part of that because if you just try to offer someone to join a membership site you're going to get very little takers on that you really have to sell them something and kind of clip on the membership site with it that's traditionally the way it's agora has been doing this for years um, even if you look at major like magazine publishers, like they, they sell you on the premium, like sports illustrated always has, or back when sports illustrated was popular, had all kinds of premiums, like the shoe phone and like, they'll have like super bowl rings and stuff like that. It's like, get the super bowl ring with your subscription to SI. Um, and that's really this kind of the same thing you're doing here. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, so you're kicking ass. It's starting off. I'm curious to hear what the process was like going from making those first couple sales to now scaling to 60 to 70 a day. What, what are some of the, like the, what are some of the, like the issues and, and problems you kind of ran into along the way with that? Yeah. Uh, before I answer that, can I actually make a comment about what you just said a minute ago? 
I think it would be really helpful for people. Yeah, let's hear it. Um, as far as the memberships go, so you're absolutely right that most people think, at least, that they don't want a membership. They, they see a, something about a monthly fee and they're like, I do, absolutely do not want that. And I think what's important to keep in mind is from our end of the table, from our side of the table as marketers, copywriters, and business owners is that people, people aren't objecting to your product or they're not objecting to your membership or your content or whatever. They're, they're objecting because they're only seeing in their head this price and monthly fee. That's what they don't want. And of course, nobody wants that if there's nothing included with it or if there's nothing that, that goes along with it or whatever. So if, if we set up a page that said, you know, hey, Justin, would you like, here's an upsell. You just bought something, here's an upsell. Hey, Justin, would you like to get $45 a month or just $37 a month? You know what I'm saying? Everybody's going to take that. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't really matter about the price. It, it matters if, if you can get some in their head, if you can give somebody the idea of whatever it is that they're going to be getting is so much more valuable than the actual monthly fee is just irrelevant. It doesn't matter. I can't tell you how many times I've had people email me right after signing up and saying, I do not want a monthly fee, something, something, something. And then after they actually sign into the program, they actually log in. And then they email me like a week later and be like, holy crap, this is like the absolute best lessons I've ever seen. I had no idea. You know, I'm sorry about the monthly fee. I had no idea. This is so amazing. I'm so glad I did it. I want to stay in. So it's not about the price. Anyway, my whole point is, if you're thinking about doing something like this, then I encourage you to think about the person and think about how you can, uh, how you can communicate the idea or the vision or whatever you want to call it in their head of whatever they think is going to be way more valuable than the price. And you have a lot higher chances of getting them to, to buy into it. That's, a, that's an excellent point. My dog is barking. George, stop. Um, yeah, I, I don't really have anything to add. I think you made a, you made a great point there. Um, all right, so let's, let's jump to what we we're going to talk about, which is, like I said, you started making sales off the bat, the offer's working. Now it's at 60 to 70 sales a day. What are some of the issues you kind of ran into scaling that up yeah um one thing that i don't really think especially if this is the very first time you're doing something like this i think it's easy to think that oh well, this really works let me just turn up the budget and it's just going to work more and you know nothing in life works that way so a couple of different things that come up uh issues that you don't really see around the corner until you turn the corner is number one due to let's say Facebook or GDN algorithms or however it works. If you just increase the budget, it doesn't equal just, you know, however much more sales that you increase the budget by. It's just not the way it works. Um, the other thing is fatigue. So if you have one ad that's going to, that's crushing it, it may crush it for a while and then it's going to crush it a little bit less and then it's going to start to drop off and your costs are going to go up, up, up. So a new problem that come that, that arises through this process is that you realize that, oh, I have to keep bringing my A game and continually, um, you know, offer somebody something from a different angle or come up with a new concept or a new ad or a new, you know, a new way into this uh, sales message or, or marketing message. I'm curious, when, when you got it working, did you scale it mostly on Facebook first and then branch out, or were you trying multiple traffic sources at once? Um, it was originally on Facebook, and I know it, it's generally smart to focus on one thing, focus on one channel, um, one traffic source until you really dial it in, until you really nail it. Um, I just happened to have run sub traffic for this specific offer uh, or for a variation of this offer before on GDN. And I, I just, my, I just like GDN like personality wise. I just get along with it better than Facebook. So um, I, I kind of went over to GDN and started turning some traffic on. And at this point, you know, I'm running Facebook and GDN and I've got somebody to start managing Facebook stuff. So it's, it's, you know, maybe not the best route, but that's what I do. Okay, cool. Um, so it's working on Facebook. It's working on GDN. I'm kind of curious in terms of you're like a one, you don't have like a huge company. You're kind of a, the solopreneur. Um, 
how much have you grown that since it kind of like started with just you? Do you have an assistant now helping you? Do you have like, how's that set up now? So starting in, just to give you the big, the, the full picture, starting in Oct- October 26th is when I actually started really advertising this thing. Um, so we went from zero to, we're going to do about 90 K this month. Um, so that's in less than six months. And this month as well, I'm I've brought on five people. So I have an assistant video editor, developer, um, and some Facebook ad guys. Nice. That's, uh, that's some pretty quick growth. Yeah. You gotta be careful though, man, because you can <laughs> break a lot of stuff or make a lot of mistakes, you know, doing Very it like true. that. Very true. Um, so that, that kind of leads me to my next point or next question, which is what's kind of your goal of this, let's say over the next 12 months, like where do you see the areas you need to improve? Uh, what are you kind of thinking? So, um, previous, uh, previous mentor of mine, and I, I greatly appreciate, uh, if anybody knows Mike Giannoulis, yeah. um, used to work for Mike, love Mike to death. He taught me a concept, um, we think of, about scaling in terms of turning up our budget, getting more customers, scaling up our marketing, right? Getting more buyers every day. That's how most people think about scaling. Sorry for the wind. Um, but Mike said, when you're scaling up your marketing, you also have to scale up the rest of your company. So instead of thinking about scaling your buyers and scaling your sales, think about it like a weight balance scale. So if you scale up your marketing, then your fulfillment and operations is going to go you know, south, right? So you have to scale. You have to balance the scale. So the more you scale up your buyers and your marketing and your customers coming in, you also have to scale up your fulfillment and your operations and all that stuff too to handle all those people. Um, so for me, the next 12 months, I definitely am going to beef up and solidify the customer support side of things. Uh, and because I've been selling in U.S., Canada, Australia, New Zealand so far, um, it's looking like if we keep doing the same thing, I'm, I'm going to have to have 24-hour support. So that's that's one major focus over the next 12 months to get that, you know, pretty solid. Um, I want to be able to hand off, more or less hand off the Facebook ad side of things to where... Uh, you know, we have a system for creating new ads and somebody else is managing the ads, obviously in a profitable way or hitting our numbers. Uh, but I also, from a, from a visionary perspective and from a, the vision of the, of the marketing department, so to speak, I'm going to scale the specific offer that I have now as much as possible, but it's going to, uh, uh, through this process, I've noticed that there are three different segments that I can really hit and I'm going to tweak different offers for those three segments based on the offer that I have now. So one is the more advanced players that already know the stuff in like the 101 course, they need to go straight to the membership or straight to a higher ticket course or straight to the master class or whatever you want to call it. So that's going to be a new funnel. Um, I, I wrote another book. I wrote a book about two years ago called how to get unstuck. And remember all my, my market is they're all frustrated and stuck on guitar. So um, I'm going to make a funnel that's, that leads with that as a lead magnet. So it's all about, um, you know, how to get unstuck, how to solve guitar play, playing problems. And that's going to be another funnel. And then the third thing is going to be essentially an iteration of what we're already doing now, which is I'm going to dump, I hate to say dumb the marketing down. I'm going to dial the marketing back to appeal to the less savvy guitar players who are uh, a little bit more on the beginning side of the journey, not beginners, but beginners in terms of my market. Um, so those are going to be the three things there. And then what I also want to do is start a, a, a free and a paid community, paid community for the buyers, free community for obviously, you know, non, non buyers and get, uh, get some people in my, in my sphere of influence, in my realm or whatever to manage that. And then additionally, if I can do all this in 12 months, um, I, I'm, I want to create a teacher program so that I definitely have teachers in my, like on my list, there's some guitar teachers on my list. So what I want to do is teach them how to teach better and how to, how to uh, attract leads and uh, get students and all that kind of stuff for two reasons. 
number one is ultimately because my bigger vision is to have these guitar teachers promote themselves on my platform or on our platform so that they're, they're building out the SEO. They're building out all the articles and stuff like that. The other thing is for customer support, not customer support, but answering guitar related questions. It takes specialized knowledge to answer guitar related questions, especially the more advanced you get. So by having, by training teachers on how to teach and how to get their own students, number one, I am teaching them how to grow their own business. I'm teaching them how to become an authority and promote content on our domains. And also at the same time, they're answering questions for new people that are coming into the community. So it essentially is kind of removing me from the uh, equation. Super smart. I mean, it's not like you got a lot on a lot on the plate for the next year. Um, yeah. But I, it, the one point you brought up that I really want to emphasize is um, scaling up is not really, it's not like this linear going up thing. W- once you kind of get things cranking, like you, you kind of have to dial back and either flatline or almost even dip a little bit to really, like you said, you got to hire and get customer service in place. You got to get merchant accounts set up. You got to get everything set up so that when you scale to 500 sales a day, can I now handle all of this? Um, and it's super, super crucial. And I mean, it's something that it took me two or three times to learn because the first couple of times I started an info product and it took off, I didn't know any of this and I just kept scaling and <laughs> shit fell apart. Yeah. yeah. So one thing that is, is a really easy concept for me to, to, to grasp that really stuck out to me that I learned from my mentor, Roger Hamilton is what I, what we call the, the value and leverage ladder. So, in terms of scaling, let's just say we have one offer that, that starts working. Well, if we, if we leverage that offer, meaning if we buy more traffic, we just drive more traffic to it, we increase our sales, eventually what's gonna happen is, like we said, the, the, the assets are gonna start to fatigue, so the performance is gonna start to, to die off, but also it's gonna strain the other side of the scale, which is your fulfillment, your operations, et cetera. So stuff breaks, like you just said. So what Roger says is that, it's, it's if you go up in an, a stepwise fashion of um, leveraged value, leverage value. And what I mean by that is if you're imagining that you're walking on some stairs, you can't step on one stair and go all the way up on one stair to the next floor. You, you can't possibly reach that high. That's why you have to go up and then over to the next stair and then go up again and go up to the next stair and then go up again. So, and that's eventually how you reach the next level, so to speak. So what I mean with uh, leverage and value is that if you create some value, like you create an offer, you create a product that is that's that the market sees value in, you can leverage that value. So you can drive ads, you drive traffic, whatever. You can spend a lot more money, and you can increase. Um, let's just measure money on this on this scale here, and value on this axis here. So you can leverage your value and increase your revenue. But what's going to happen again? Diminishing returns. You can't leverage forever until you until your value starts to go down so much. Um, the more you increase your leverage, the less the value, uh, the value decreases relative to the leverage, if that makes sense. So anyway, uh, you're driving traffic, you're starting to hit diminishing returns. At some point, you've got to increase your value. So by the time you, your ads start, uh, stop performing or you've you know, sold to all the people who are going to buy in that market or you've strained your customer service, your support, your operations or whatever, well, now you've got to increase the value. So you've got to go to the, uh, I guess you'd call it the run side of the stairs to where you've got to either build more products, create new ads, beef up your marketing team, whatever. And once you do that, then you can leverage again. That's how you keep going up. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally, totally. Um, okay, so uh, we've been talking for about 40 minutes. I got two more questions that I want to wrap up with here. Basically, let's say for anybody watching this who, um, is kind of looking for two, what are two of like the needle movers, two of the aha moments you kind of had when creating this offer that uh, you kind of wish you would have known before you even started? Um, I think a big mistake, a big mistake that I see a lot of people make, and I made this over and over and over again, and that's why I recognize it, I think, so much. Um, when you're first getting started, especially if you're going to do your own offer, and you're gonna create all of the pieces, all the components necessary to drive traffic, convert the people, et cetera. Uh, at least me, uh, I, I got, the idea in my head was that I needed to complete, create a completely new offer with new ads, new VSL, new 
you know, um, I don't know, checkout page, all the pieces of the funnel uh, at one time. And if I ran traffic to that and it didn't work, then what I did numerous times literally was scrap everything. And I, and I would go back, I would go back to the research phase because I thought I didn't know the market well enough, which is probably why I know the market really well now. But I would go back to the research phase and be like, okay, I messed up. I need to start all the way over. So oh I would go back God. to listing out pain points, benefits, et cetera. I would build a completely new offer, write a completely new offer, all new pages, everything. So obviously that took a long time. And I did that maybe, maybe three times. Um, in fact, there were two VSLs. I'm not kidding. There were two VSLs in the beginning. And this was, this was a few years ago, but there were two VSLs that I, excuse me, there was one webinar and one VSL that I created all myself, produced it, everything, wrote everything, produced it, um, you know, made the video, and I never run traffic. I never ran traffic to either one of them. Wow. And I, that's another, I guess that's another point of, of being afraid to put something out there. So maybe that would be my two points that I wish I would have known from the beginning. Number one is the idea behind whatever you're offering somebody is the thing that's gonna move the needle or not. Like if, if I run a Facebook ad and the main idea is, hey, you can buy, uh, you know, 180 pair of, an $180 pair of Jordan Nikes for only $60. If you just go to this next page, whoever's interested in buying Air Jordans or whatever, and, you know, considering if my ad is actually believable, they're going to click over and and see what it's all about like that's just a good idea that's that's something that somebody would want um on the other hand if like in the guitar market for instance if if i write an ad and the, the basic idea is learn guitar click here like it's gonna do really terrible because everybody else they've heard learning guitar learn guitar learn guitar over and over and over again and also each end of each person that you talk to, um, everybody in the market is an, they're a single person and they're all thinking about um, something specific related to their life, their situation, specifically with the guitar playing. Maybe in their head, they're thinking like, I want to get better at my chords or I want to write my own songs or I want to be able to improvise, play solos or whatever. And going back to my example, if they see an ad that just says learn guitar, like it just doesn't really it doesn't right. do anything for them, you know? I want to I want to hop back to your second point, which was just get the offer out there because uh, yep. you, you created two offers and never tested them. This is a big like I had this issue when I started out um, where I was just sitting on stuff and procrastinating and I didn't want to put it out. Um, I always had the issue where I was like, I need to learn more. Mm-hmm. I was like, I need to read this book first or I need to do this course first. And the thing I realized from actually doing it is if you actually create your own funnel you create the sales page, you create the upsell, you start running some ads. Even if you only spend 30 bucks on ads, you will learn so much more doing that about what works and what doesn't than doing anything else. Right. So here's one of those things that we always hear, but we don't understand it until we experience it. And I think that's a great point. So I, I always wondered, like we, we always see those guys out there who if we're the types of people that are into personal development, we read a lot of books, we, we try to learn as much as we can, especially about marketing and business and stuff like that. And we see those guys out there who, if somebody interviews them, they say like, well, what books do you read? And they're like, well, I don't, I don't really read many books. I just make a lot of money. Like I just, you know, I just run my business. Or like Grant Cardone, I remember seeing an interview like, I don't know, three or four years ago. And somebody was interviewing him about his morning routine. And he's like, what's your morning routine, Grant? And he's, he, he's like, uh, just wake up, take a piss, get to work. And it's like, once you put something out there, once you start running traffic to something, you realize that you don't need to learn all that stuff. You don't need to read all those books. You don't need to do any of that shit. You just need to put something out there. And then you realize, oh, this is how it works. You know what I'm saying? You, you don't need to learn all that stuff to make money. Yeah, I mean, it's very true because it's, it's so much more about the tweaking you do once you have that first thing out there. A lot of people don't understand this. and. I didn't either at first because it was one of those things where I just assumed you'd put out an offer and it worked or it didn't. And the reality is all the top offers that are working, like if you took the top hundred offers that are working right now, 
I bet you less than 8% of them worked right away. Um, the odds of you hitting a home run like on your first try is very, very small. Um, I've had it happen for me before, but it's few and far between. Usually, usually when you put something out and it works, uh, I mean, yeah, like I said, it's just like one of those unicorn moments. But the reality is what happens is you put something out and you spend $1,000 on ads and you maybe bring back, I don't know, 400 bucks, 500 bucks. And you're like, okay, this thing has legs. Like if we can dial in the hook, if we can dial in the lead, if we can dial in the upsell, dial in the ads, we're going to be breaking even pretty quick on this thing. Um, that, that's a big point I want. I wanted to mention because um, that pro- probably would have saved me two different offers that I threw away early in my career because I, I had one offer, my testosterone offer in like 2013 or 14. We put it out and it was breaking even on email buys on day one, the first time we ever put it out there. And I was like, oh, this isn't making us enough money. Let's scrap it and move on to another offer. <laughs> we had not tested anything on this thing. I'm like, knowing what I know now, I'm like, that offer was actually a home run. Like, if something's breaking even on day one and you haven't tested a damn thing on it, like, mm-hmm. that's crazy good. Um, right. But yeah, so th- that's a big point I want to point out. Uh, I'm glad you brought it up because just get the offer out there, get it tested. And then the real art and the real magic is in tweaking it to get it to where you want. Yeah. It's, it's, it's at the end of the day, I mean, getting an offer to work, like, yes, you have to know about copy. Yes. You have to know your market. Yes. You have to be able to make, you know, good offers and stuff like that. But there really is no magic. Like getting an offer to work is no different than digging a ditch. You just keep, you have to keep digging if you want a hole. Like if you want to get the hole be deeper, then you have to stick the shovel in the ground and keep digging. It's a lot of work. Yep. Cool, man. So we're going to wrap this up. Last question I have for you. So you've been in Copy Accelerator for about two years now. Um, I'd be curious your thoughts on kind of the program that Steph and I put together in the network. Um, and if anybody's kind of watching who might be interested in it, what you would tell them. So first of all, I would say if you can – Use whatever resources you can to determine if you would be the right fit for the program first. And if you do determine that you're the right fit, um, I think you would probably be wasting more money by thinking and wondering if you should join than by just signing up to join. And I'm not kidding. Like, you know, I'm not trying to uh, sound cute or whatever. Like, I actually think that the the level of the network, the, the... there's no possible way to realize how valuable it is until you experience it, going back to the experience. For me to be able to say, hey, Justin, like literally on a Saturday afternoon to go to Facebook or whatever and say, hey, Justin, I got this issue or can you look at this lead or, you know, I got this question about a merchant account or something. And then somebody who's, you know, way more qualified than me, who has way more experience than I do, will just just tell you the answer. Like, it's, I don't know, man. I, like I said, if, if if you if you're the right fit just sign up like it's that simple it's that simple awesome man appreciate you saying that i mean i agree um i actually Stefan and i look at it that way too where if someone's a, a really good fit for it now um we actually get angry if they don't sign up because we're like this is going to catapult your business more than anything and i and we know it because we've seen it happen over and over and over again and it actually deep down in my gut, I'm like, I know this is the best thing for you to spend money on. So if you don't sign up, I'm actually angry for you because it's what you need. Um, but cool. I, I appreciate you saying that. And, uh, yeah, amazing. Congrats to kind of see your, see your pro- uh, progress so far, scaling that offer up to 60, 70 sales a day. It's been uh, pretty incredible. Um, so yeah, big congrats on that. Um, any last words you want to wrap up with? Uh, I think that's all I got, man. I, I think I talked enough already. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. So Jonathan Boyd, he is in the guitar niche. Um, appreciate you coming on and sharing your wisdom with everybody. Absolutely. Thank you, man. Really appreciate it.